In today's video, I'm going to do a nude photo shoot with a model I haven't worked with before, and I believe she doesn't have much experience either. Go for it. Come on, we're ready for today's session. I have Miriam here, she's a model, she has done shoots, but she's not really a professional model. In fact, she's a lawyer, right? So pay attention. Well then, what we're going to do today is a session that she requested to be in a bathrobe. Not because it's a bathrobe session, but because it's going to be an implied nude session, meaning that nothing will be visible, but it will have a vibe focused on legs, hips, and showing a lot of skin. So I have several sets in mind, but we are going to start with the first one in which I am simply going to search, working a little with this more fur-like blanket, black background, and then a very low-key roll, and play a little with that. He covers his body with it, as if it were a skin, and explore different poses and angles. To begin with, this session is going to be quite gentle and elegant in nature. We are not aiming for anything sexy or erotic at all, but quite the opposite. We are going for something very elegant, attempting to desexualize the female nude body. That is perhaps the most challenging aspect, to transform a photo from being sexy to being sensual, which I believe is where it truly shines. One of the things I specialize in, as you all know, is the boudoir genre. And in boudoir photography precisely, that is the key difference compared to lingerie photos for magazines like FHM or Maxime, which are photos of partially naked women for men or partially naked women for women who find them appealing and attractive. So that's where I feel most comfortable working in the realm of boudoir photography and artistic nude photography, which is how I would categorize what we're going to do today. It's in that domain that I believe I excel, staying away from any form of sexualization in the images. So it's a very thin red line and it's highly subjective as well, I must say. There will be people who see my photos and say, well, you're saying the opposite of what you're saying. Everyone has their own line in their head. Ultimately, what matters here is that Miriam likes the photos because they are for her book and that what remains is something I am proud of myself. If we achieve that result, everything will go really well. Are you okay? Very good. You do not have cold? No, no, yes. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to start by starting to assemble it. When I work with nudity, I always try to make the model as comfortable as possible on a physical level. So right now, she is obviously naked under the bathrobe to avoid any marks. It is very important to tell your models to wear cotton clothes, not to be too tight, because otherwise, you are going to have to Photoshop a lot of marks on the naked skin. I hope he listened to me, and if not, Christian will have to work a lot in Photoshop. All right then. Well, I just used a swear word, even though I told him not to use any, and I just said it. So let's start by focusing on the lighting. I usually start by illuminating the subject with the bathrobe on. There will come a moment when I'll need to see her skin, and that's when we'll start uncovering her, but not for the purpose of taking the photo, rather to observe how the light falls on her body. And I will have her naked on the set only when it is truly necessary to achieve the goal she has requested. So let's start there. To illuminate this, as I say, just relax for now, I'm going to give you a stool, because I'm going to take a while. So first of all, we need to decide how to light the scene. When choosing the modifier, I want the softest possible light with smooth shadow transitions, because I want her body to blend into the background. Additionally, since she has dark hair, we'll make use of the black blanket to create a range of grayscale tones and blend it towards black. But what I need is a very large light source to provide that soft light, but then we're going to create directional lighting to achieve contrast that will give us volumes and shapes in the body, which is the beauty of artistic nude photography. So I'm going to use an Octa 5 and put it on a boom arm. And from there, I'll have a lot of maneuverability to move it wherever I want, wherever it suits me. I'm going to download it here. Wait a minute, I'm going to open here, otherwise I'm going to die. This boom arm thing is great, but doing it alone is hard, you know? So well, it has its trick. Now that we're at it, I'll explain how a boom arm works and how to get a good performance out of it and not burden it, because boom arms are expensive and it's good to use them well. Okay. It is advisable to use a safety cable when you put a boom arm so that it does not fall on anyone in case there is a boom arm failure and such. But come on, in a good boom arm, it is difficult for that to happen. Okay, so the first thing I need is to have a good counterweight. If I open here now, you're going to see the boom arm fall forward. I have the part here to tighten the boom arm. And obviously I can put this here and tighten it, being careful with the weight as it was loose, and lock the boom arm by force. But that's not how the boom arm normally works. The boom arm works then because it is simply balanced on the scales. So if you notice, I'm placing the weight here approximately, and now it leans back a bit, so I have to lift it up a little, and there it is balanced. Right now, if I close the weight here, the boom arm is not locked. Can you see? I can move it however I want, but instead where I leave it, it holds up well. So there the boom arm does not suffer and it is how you have to have it to be able to work. In this case, I'm going to position the boom arm quite overhead to achieve a cool lighting effect. I'm going to work with the boom arm positioned almost overhead. 
Let's angle this a bit. The boom arm is one of those things that may seem like a hefty investment because it's just metal and seems unnecessary, but it actually enables you to capture better photos and opens up more possibilities. I'm realizing that if I leave it like that, it's not going to have enough projection and it's going to limit me a lot. So I'm going to throw it a little more, which is going to change my counterweight. To throw it, I just turn it face down and open up here and then I can throw it. And now I have to balance it again because obviously by having pushed that forward, I have lost the counterweight. I see you with the face of, what the fuck is this guy explaining here? I came here to take photos and this guy is giving me a lecture on physics. Okay, here I have it more or less balanced. I've had models, consultants, bankers, I've had everyone. The truth is, sometimes people think that models are a different type of girl who lives a wild life and all that, but it's actually the opposite. Sometimes you have models who simply love it and have their regular professions. Sure, it's an easy body. You can combine it super well. I'm going to raise it a bit higher because she will be standing. This is a well-known lighting setup by Peter Coulson, which involves working with completely overhead lighting. I know Peter very well. I've worked with him many times and it is a scheme that really gives an optimal result. What Peter does, unlike me, is that he positions the light first and then moves the model to find the desired lighting. In this case, what I do is position the light based on where the model wants it, taking into account backgrounds and other factors. I prefer working this way. All right, let's begin. For now, just stand up without removing the bathrobe or anything. Just stand here on this mark in front of it and my stool what you had. It is very important when you work naked, you have to be very careful and work very well to avoid misunderstandings. I think that Miriam is a highly intelligent woman and in the five minutes since she entered the studio, we have already seen that this is a professional and serious environment. There is nothing strange or unusual about it. When you work with a model in your own studio, especially if it's not as big as this one or located in the heart of Barcelona and you're doing a nude scene, they often come in with a guard up being cautious about what they might encounter because there are many unprofessional individuals out there. So, it's important to handle the situation with care. Anything you can do to make her feel more comfortable and see that you are professionals will add 20 points to the session. But not because it is more comfortable, but because it will work better. So, nonsense like this. I'll leave a stool here for her to place her robe and pick it up when needed. When she feels the need for her robe, she'll have it within reach. If I take her robe and keep it down here and suddenly she needs to cover herself due to a physical need, she would have to move, search for it, and that's where I come in. It's like I'm guarding her robe. These little details make a huge difference in whether a model feels comfortable with you or not, and that's a significant distinction. So I recommend that you pay attention to any details you can, adjust the temperature, and so on. All of that will enhance the experience. Look, in fact, I'm going to bring the heater closer to her because there it's going to warm me up more than her. Have you had bad experiences with photographers? It is a scourge. It seems that it is a scourge. With each one. Yes, that's what everyone says, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm going to put the stove on this side. And how long have you been modeling? Little? Because where are you from? Oh, from Tarragona. Yeah. Oh, very good. Ah, so you're over 18, right? Yeah. <laughs> exact. Very important. <laughs> Don't even think about doing a nude photo shoot with a minor. I mean, it's not just about nudity being highly inappropriate with minors, but for anything involving them, you need completely different contracts. You have to work with contracts to be able to take their photos, not to mention publishing them, which is what we do with all models. She has signed a contract for the transfer of rights so that we can use the images. With a minor, you need permission from her parents to take photos of her. It is a bit more complex. I'll leave this here for now. And now I already have the stove for her. She has her comfort zone there and now I'm going to start lighting. Ignore me, I'm going to start doing my job and when I'm here, I'll let you know so we can start working. For the moment, totally ignore me. Okay, the trick here is that the more light is on top of it, the more contrast I will generate. If I put the light here, I am not illuminating it from above, but I am illuminating it from these 45 degrees and also from above. If I put the light much further back, for example here, what I'm going to be doing is throwing light from above, but very little light from the front, which will give it much more contrast. I don't want that exaggerated contrast, so I'm going to go further back, and I think that from here it will be a very beautiful light now. 
the good thing would be if I had turned on the flash before. I don't know if it will be... No, damn it. But let's see if I can turn it on from here. I don't think laptops. If I had a studio flash, it could be turned on from the trigger, but not with a battery. Well, nothing happens. I always say it in these sessions, she's a whore. It's, it's horrible. When you get used to working with assistants, working without them. Since I now have Danny recording, Danny is normally my assistant, so he's the one who does all these things. And already when you get used to working with assistants, you are already useless afterwards. It is already on, and now yes, we put it up. Let's go find this. Look, something like that. The wheel, that the stove does not melt me. I will come more focused. I think something like that would be nice. I'm going to change this. I'm going to toast the counterweight bag. And your bench. Okay, I'm going to test lights. Here, since we're black on black, I don't care too much about the blur. I'm badly angled. Sorry. Eh. I have to come a little more here. They're better. Into the As I was saying, since I'm going to have the black blanket against her black hair and a black background, the only thing that will stand out is her skin. In terms of focus and blur, I don't need a shallow depth of field with the background blurred. On the contrary, I want the background to be in focus. The background you see, the black background, is actually the worn out part of the floor that people usually discard when it's too worn. We keep it because it provides texture to the background, which I find useful for my photography. So I really like that point of texture that the background has, so I don't mind that it looks a little out of focus. So I'm going to work, for example, to f4. I'm with a 9tem, you know, it's my favorite focal length for Olympus portraits. And I'm going to work to a f4. I'm going to work at the moment. I'm going to see if at ISO 100 the LEDs I have for the video don't bother me. And if you don't bother me with that, Oops, I have the flash on, sorry. No. Okay, now I have a totally black photo because it's the one I have without the flash. And that means the LEDs don't bother me. So I can work perfectly at ISO 100. I'm going to go up to 200 ISO because that's the base for this sensor. That's where it gives better quality. Sorry, I was at 1000 speed. That's why I didn't get contaminated. I'm going to go down to 250 and ISO 200, 250. I have minimal contamination from the LEDs, but it's almost nil. So it won't bother me in the slightest, and I think that I'll be able to work well that way. Okay, so now I'm going to put the flash in. <coughs> I have this in C, I think, perfect. I'm going to turn it down, and now we're just going to work on seeing the light fall on it. Here I have too much light. Go down a couple of steps. How hot is this canyon? Things are starting to get better there, but it still has a lot of light. It's not that it's already overexposed, far from it, but in terms of visual contrast, since she is on a black surface, her skin tone, which is at 203, appears too bright. So I'm gonna lower it a bit more. She's pretty pale skin, so. Yes, much better. That already has a more low key vibe. It has a pretty interesting vibe. Then when I play with it, I'll play around because if you look here, we've got these pretty heavy shadows. Notice what happens if she takes a step back, a small step back like that, just like that, and I compensate because obviously being further back will have less light, but look at how the light changes on her because we're filling in more light from the front. Look at this, it's really amazing, it's just incredible. But notice how here I have a more overhead light that creates more shadows in the eye sockets and generates more contrast. And now as she walks backward, more light enters her eyes and the lighting becomes more typical, more attractive but this light is going to work really well for what we want. Come forward again, please, perfect. I think we're more or less there. Now the next thing I need to see is how the light falls on the rest of her body because there's an inverse law. I have the light very close to her head, so as it goes down, the light will fall. So since your legs are more or less free, I'm going to ask you to stick one leg out of the slit of the... That's it, sort of perfect. And then I'm going to see how the light comes out at that height. So notice how I have a light that is more intense in her, in the face and in the body it is a little lower, but it is not exaggerated. My body does not fall into shadows. And that's going to work really well because having less light on the body than on the face will direct the viewer's attention to the eyes rather than the body, contributing to the desexualization of the image I'm aiming for. So now in terms of lighting, I think we're good. The stool is bothering me a bit, but I won't move anything. All right, I'll help you with the blanket to ensure nothing is visible.
So we just exchanged bathrobe for blanket. Tell me. You're not going out. You can stay there if you're not cold. So let's change this. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to catch you. Are you okay there? I'll catch. This is going to burn. <laughs> Stove and bathrobe is not a good idea. Let's do this profile. Okay. We are going to try to remove the bracelets and stuff. The ring? No, it is yours. Okay. So, remember that you have it here. We are going to play it covering your pubis and sticking out your chest above all as well. Entonces el That's it, perfect, there it is. So we are going to try to cross that leg looking for the curve of the ass a little. Can you take slippers? As you're more comfortable. Okay, so I'll go from there. Oops, the tool cable has gone everywhere. Okay, let's see how this goes. It's brutal, super cute. I'm going to get off to project it. It's a trick. Don't worry, let me finish measuring the light because I have to see how the light falls on your body. And then what you're going to have to give is the hip a little bit more over there. That one, perfect. And now I direct you when we begin. Now I only look at lights. And when I have the light, I'll let you know. Okay, take a look. The photo is beautiful at the level of lights. Now what we will have to work on is her, her pose, her work. So let's try to start small. First, let's try to round out the buttocks a bit. So you're going to raise the heel at the back as if you were wearing high heels and cross your leg a little more. It stays that way uncomfortable and you can do it in every photo. So we're going to try to keep that. Then the blanket on the chest is too much. Let's try to make it look a bit more natural. No, like I'm covering myself up. Also, bring your arms together in the middle of your chest like this and raise the blanket a bit more, slowly, perfect. Now what I need is a bit of a twist. Keep your hips there, don't rotate them any further, but turn your chest a little bit towards me. Perfect, perfect. That's it. And then now, since you don't have hands, I'll change your hair. Seem to you? So all I want is for you to pass your hair. Do you have a free hand, this one? Yeah. Okay, so move your hair from this side to that over your head, wildly. Perfect. There. We look for that loop that is super feminine. And we have it. So, brutal. It is spectacular. Perfect. Okay, look down at the ground. And remember, okay? The hip is pointing there and the chest points towards me. That, that. That little rotation works really well. Now what we have to avoid are the crossed arms. Lower your arms down a bit. I mean, leave one arm there like hugging you and the other. That's perfect, much better. Give me more chest towards me. Now what I need is for you to lift my face up and close your eyes. More to that side. To there? Yes, but more like chin up. Give me the chest. Don't forget the chest towards me. And the chin like there and close your eyes. Okay, the hand we change from there. The bottom hand, change it. That's perfect. Yes, yes, hug, but don't make it a cross. You can hug well. That's perfect. Perfect. Give me more chest towards me. Super pretty. That and that look you've given me now suddenly brutal. Can you take a little step back? I'm going to try to lower the contrast a bit. And I'm going to give a little more light. Perfect. There, there, you are brutal. Okay, it happens to me that the blanket is too much for me. Yes, so we are going to try to do the same from the back, more towards the center. In other words, cover your first breast so that it is well covered and reduce the blanket on the other. That is perfect. Brilliant. Don't hold your chest with your hand. Pet him alone. That's it there, perfect. As if you take the blanket. Turn your chest towards me. That one is beautiful. Turn your chest towards me. The ass, keep it pointing there. That is, that is the hip, excuse me, towards there. Upside down hip over there. There, perfect. And now give me the chest as if rotating, as if I were a robot. Perfect there, brutal. Look down. Spectacular, huh? You're incredible. Look up, that's it. Chin up, perfect. Close your eyes, that's it, perfect. Okay, can you hold the blanket with one hand in the middle of your chest? You tell me how I stand it. Yes, as long as you are comfortable, don't worry. That's it, hold on with one hand. The blanket. Perfect, there it is. Brilliant. There, I smile a little. A little more smile. That is very pretty. Breastfeed, remember, let's not stay linear. We always have to try to search with the hip towards one angle and the chest towards another. We're looking for the torsion of the abdominal, okay? okay. Give me the chest. 
Okay, so tell me, no. Do not turn my ass because it looks beautiful. The ass over there and now give me breast only. That's perfect. There, there. Brilliant. Okay, move your hand up to your chest. The other. The hand from bottom to top. That is if... Perfect. Perfect, and look at me. He raises his head a little. Well, I finished the first look. I finally got her to look better. She looked a bit exposed at the end, but when she saw the photos, she liked it, so I think the result is very good. She is spectacular. She has a lot of potential. I believe she has little experience as a model, but as she gains confidence throughout the session, we will bring out even more. I'm going to try various styles or looks within this, using fabric on the floor, sitting down, and later on topless, and I'm sure we will capture amazing photos. If you want to see the rest of the session, go to Joran Mandes Education, the online education platform that I have had for a few years where you can access a lot of content, live shows, masterclasses, talks with other photographers, lighting courses, photography courses, Photoshop, etc. And surely your photography will improve. See you in the next video.